Welcome back to DHN. Let's talk crypto. Cardano's DJED stablecoin is getting ready for launch and exchanges are already starting to list it. One of Cardano's longtime partners, BitTrue, will be listing the stablecoin upon launch, which is supposed to be by the end of this month. In this video, we're going to dive into this story as well as the stablecoin ecosystem for Cardano. I found some very interesting things. If you're new here and enjoy what you hear, be sure to subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss future content. We cover all types of assets on this channel. That's why we call it Global Adoption, Global Perspective. So, the DJ Stablecoin is actually issued by Cody on the Cardano blockchain. It is algorithmic, but not like Terra Luna. It has a collateral token, Shin, which is also backed by ADA tokens. This token will be listed on BitTrue as well. And according to BitTrue Medium's blog post, there will be staking available upon launch on top of that. This is going to be big for many reasons. One of them is the fact that the market in general is moving towards global stablecoin regulation and adoption. So the timing of this couldn't have been more perfect, in my opinion. Let's learn a bit more about DJ though. On their website, they give us a pretty clear explanation of things, starting with what an algorithmic stablecoin actually is. According to them, they state an algorithmic stablecoin actually uses an algorithm underneath, which can issue more coins when its price increases and buy them off the market when the price falls. The rules for such actions by the algorithm are available in smart contracts embedded in that platform. How the DJ stablecoin functions, users must communicate with the smart contract by transferring ADA to its address in order for minting. After that, the contract will return DJ to the user. DJ will aim to always be $1. The base coin, which serves as the foundation, is ADA. And assuming ADA is worth $2, the users will need to deposit 0.5 ADA to the contract in order to mint one stablecoin. Users can continue this procedure, sending more and more ADA to the contract to get additional stablecoins. The contract creates a pool in this way. The users will transfer one DJ back if they want to sell it. At first, that all sounded a bit complicated to me, but then I remember Cardano's total supply is 34 and a half billion. The use of ADA for minting is going to dramatically cut into that circulating supply. That means scarcity, which means price movement, usually to the upside. And one thing I do know about Cardano is that the price is not always as volatile as other crypto projects. Once this stablecoin starts running, I'm expecting a bump in price that will be sustained going forward. DJ has a reserve coin. This is called Shin. Its function in the ecosystem is to maintain price stability, specifically by ensuring the stablecoin's peg and the collateralization rate. By creating Shin, its holders offer stability to users of the stablecoin. They also have priority in burning their stablecoins into a stable US dollar equivalent. That value is paid in ADA and it comes from the reserve. They won't be able to do this though if the reserve ratio is below 400% in order to prevent taking on too much risk or receiving too many rewards. The smart contract also forbids the purchase of Shin after the reserve ratio reaches 800%. Users may support the stablecoin ecosystem by supplying liquidity through exchanging of Zen. So it all requires a bit more study on my part, but it seems as though as long as a stable reserve ratio is maintained, the system should remain steady. The idea of an algorithmic stablecoin is still a bit sketchy. However, with coins such as Cardano and Tron for the sake of this discussion, with a large amount of supply, they can better handle these collateralized setups. The issuer, Cody, has a pretty good foundation too. Cody is actually native to Ethereum. It offers its services by providing tokenization through ERC-20 tokens. That is very important because with that comes programmability, which is a big talking point right now in cross-border payments. Their stablecoin offering is also pretty interesting. They allow you to create branded stablecoins, which will be massive for retailers. They also do remittances and loyalty programs. Again, major retail use cases right there. Found this to be interesting. Co-founder used to work at HSBC as an auditor, and the CTO is the former head of research for IBM. Definitely got some smart brains behind Cody. 
as you can see here, Cardano is one of their working partners, which gives them access to this suite of tools. Cardano has a number of other stablecoin projects that I discovered while putting this piece together. These here, I feel, lend more to the DeFi and Web3 side of things, with the exception of Stasis. We covered why Stasis is a big deal in my stablecoin agenda video that can be looked at as Cardano's entrance into the European stablecoin market, who are way further along with stablecoin regulations than most of the world. Now, we do have one more haymaker when it comes to stablecoins or Cardano, and this one is different. We're talking USDA, first ever native stablecoin on Cardano. Now, I'm going to read this directly from Emergo's blog post, the company working with Cardano on this project. To better understand the benefits of this design choice, we'll use the example of USDA, the first USD-backed Cardano stablecoin scheduled to launch in Q1 of 2023. USDA will be a native token to the Cardano blockchain that is backed one-to-one -one by real-world reserves. It's meant to be a stable asset that can unlock fast global transactions without legacy banking and payment infrastructure delays. In blockchains that use smart contracts to represent tokens, users are at the mercy of the fee cost of the network. If a network is highly congested, the fees for using the blockchain will climb and price out more and more users, further reducing the use cases of the network and removing active users, which would be particularly dangerous for stable coins. A stable asset loses its role as a means of payment the more expensive it is to transfer. For example, if a user has to pay a service costing 50 ADA, but the transaction fee itself costs $29, clearly they're not going to make that transaction. Sounds like they're talking about Ethereum. But in the case of USD ADA, the native asset, things are a bit different. This means that there is no need to compute a smart contract when transferring it. For this reason, the fee for that transaction is always stable and predictable, which means that users can move small amounts of USDA to pay for things. Developers don't have to worry about expensive fees reducing its utility. The security of the base protocol is extended to the token, so users can be sure that the USDA is secure while developers can model for its predictive behavior. This setup basically means that transactions with USDA would be just like a Bitcoin or ADA transaction, where everything is recorded right then in one block. This dramatically improves not only speed, but efficiency. As mentioned, this is set to come out in the first quarter of this year as well. So Cardano is hitting the stablecoin market pretty strong. There's also Anzins.com where you can sign up for the wait list to be the first to get access to USDA. Now, I do want to leave you with a bit of speculation, if you will. Back in June of 2021, World Economic Forum published a report on the future of crypto. In their report, they named six coins and number two was Cardano, who they specifically mentioned for their payments ability. This post from IOHK talks about the Hydra for Payments protocol on Cardano. This is going to dramatically improve the speed of processing payments on the Cardano chain as well. With that in mind, at this year's World Economic Forum event, a brand new universal payment network was launched. Now, HBAR may be front and center on this thumbnail, but someone in Cardano's partner network is also involved. As always, I'm Wade Teamer. See you in the next video.